Welcome to Church of the Risen Savior on this Palm Sunday celebration. The name Jerusalem, by many etymologies, means city of peace. However, for centuries, it has been anything but that. Throughout its long history, Jerusalem has been captured and recaptured 44 times, besieged 23 times, and completely destroyed at least twice. Jesus rode into Jerusalem to become its Messiah. He did not come as the head of a conquering army, but riding on a donkey, a beast of surprisingly low stature. He came not to play God, but to empty himself and take the form of a slave. In today's gospel, the picture Mark paints is bleak. There are no disciples around at the end, no relatives, not even God. Why have you forsaken me? Even in a not peaceful Jerusalem, Jesus makes peace possible through his own suffering and dying. All the while, we keep thinking that we can bring peace by killing others in war. Jesus shows us that we bring peace by dying for others. Because of this, God greatly exalted him. Today begins Jesus and our journey into Holy Week. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made of his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us ask God's blessing upon these palm branches and upon ourselves. Almighty God, we pray, bless these palm branches and make them holy. Increase the faith of those who place their hope in you and graciously hear the prayers of those who call on you that we who today with these palm branches hail Christ in his triumph may bear fruit for you by good works accomplished in him. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one else has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying that colt? 
They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Like the crowds on that day in Jerusalem, in song we honor Jesus Christ the Lord. Lift up. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so come to a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned my back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? All who see me scoff at me And they shake their heads saying He relies on the Lord He relies on the Lord Let him deliver him My God, my God Why have you abandoned Divide my clothing, casting lots for my robes. Do not leave me alone. I will praise you, O Lord. Make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? to my people I will call out your name Oh give praise to the Lord Oh give glory to God Revere him Israel My God my God why have you abandoned me why have you from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth. So that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth. So that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens.
that Jesus Christ is Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to, the, to him in reply, you say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave them no answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner, whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have the, him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. 
With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others? Can he, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling on Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Mark the Evangelist tells us that the curtain was torn in two. This curtain, this veil, in front of the part of the temple called the Holy of Holies, where no one could enter but the high priest and only once a year. So this barrier, this curtain, this veil was torn in two to remove the barrier, to signal that Jesus Christ himself is the new temple, the new holy of holies, and all of us 
have access to his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, his peace that continues to flow out to us to this day. Interestingly, that same image of being torn happens in Mark's gospel at the scene of Jesus' baptism, where Mark tells us that the heavens were torn. The Holy Spirit descends with the message of this being the beloved Son. So there's something in Mark's telling of the good news for us about how we must appreciate how we have access to God through Christ. And we make ourselves present to this access in a very special way during this holy week with the sacred liturgies put out for us and with our own personal prayer and meditation giving thanks to God for this access, for this ability to be in communion with the ever-living God. Mindful of our access to God through Christ, let us pray. For a holy week of healing, especially for those killed in the recent mass shooting in Denver and in all places where there is violence, we pray. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For a holy week of unity among all Christians, we pray. Gracious Gracious God, God, hear hear our our prayer. For a holy week for all who experience racism, marginalization, or discrimination, that God will heal their spirits, protect them from harm, and lead us all to new ways of compassion and justice, we pray. Gracious Gracious God, God, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For those who will receive the sacraments of initiation at Easter and be received into the church, and for this community as we enter these holy days together, we pray. Gracious Gracious God, God, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For a holy week for those who are ill and have asked for our prayers, especially David Meglotti, Christine De La Rosa, David Calloway, and Dave Willett. May all who suffer be encouraged by Jesus, who conquered suffering and death. We pray. Gracious Gracious God, God, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Today, we pray for our beloved dead, including Bill Burge, Harriet Feichek, Patrick Hegarty, Leland Knudsen, Gregory Gerlach, and Jan Wolfe, as well as those who have recently died. And for those who are dying, and those who are grieving the passing of a loved one, we pray. Gracious Gracious God, God, hear hear our our prayer. Lord God, source of mercy and salvation, hear these prayers we offer as we begin this holy week through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
My sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is almighty and ever living. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, far good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord God, almighty and eternal, through Jesus the Christ. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has brought us our justification. And so with all of the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. O Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With the confidence that the Lord Jesus teaches, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory are yours now, now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a greeting of peace. This loaf of bread that we break, this cup of wine that we bless, are they not communion in the life of Christ?
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us stand to complete our prayer. O Lord, nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. If any of you wish to make a donation for Easter flowers here in the church, uh, you can send in a, don a donation to the parish office. Uh, these need to be received uh, by Monday for the names to be published in the Easter Bulletin. Check out our parish bulletin and our parish website for the various liturgies during the sacred Easter Triduum. And if you would like to pick up uh, some of the blessed palm branches, you're welcome to come into the building when it is open. Uh, there'll be a table with the branches to your right as you come into the building. Remember food on the first, the opportunity to bring non-perishable food items to replenish our local food shelf. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.